Virginia, sweetheart mine. Radio Bristol presents Barman Fun Time, made possible by Eastman Credit Union. Wherever life takes you, ECU is by your side. McLaughlin Performance Theater here at the Birthplace of Country Music Museum. I'm your host, Farm and Fun Timer, Chris Trulson, welcoming you to another live broadcast of Farm and Fun Time. Another sold out packed house here. How is everybody? Good? All right. We're raring to go. As usual, we've got a wonderful, wonderful show for you. A big howdy to all our friends listening over the air or on Facebook, wherever you might be. We appreciate you tuning in. Uh, let's get right on into the show. We've got one of the most celebrated bluegrass bands of all time here with us this evening, Blue Highway. Yeah. Also, a dance band called Five Mile Mountain Road. Yeah. This month for the Radio Bristol Farm Report, we're talking turkeys. We visited the diverse production of pasture-raised meats found at Cave Ridge Farm in Bluntville, Tennessee. Yeah. All love turkey. Know that it's about time to get a turkey, so we're looking forward to that. Uh, and our heirloom recipe segment features Burger Bar owner Joe Deal, who's going to talk to us about his famous top secret chili dog chili recipe from Bunting's Pharmacy. Y'all remember that? secrets tonight so that's gonna be good and of course first things first we've got the farm and fun time house band built in the bells we've got Kalia Yeagle, Carl Zerfus, and Helena Hunt with us yeah. and we're gonna jump on into a tune we've been doing for a long time this is one that's lonesome it's old and it's blue it's the old lonesome blues Oh 
Pliego, Helena Hunt. It's the old Lonesome Blues. All right, we'll keep it lonesome here with this next one, too. This is a brand, this is a new song. Been writing a whole lot of new songs. And this one here is called, I'll Never Get Along With You. Goes like this. Mm -hmm. Memory I won't soon forget You were my dream Oh, so it seems Now that I'm leaving I'd like for you to know Though I still love you And only think of you Life will go on, I suppose Try to understand I just can't be your loving man Be your loving man I've done everything that I can do I'll never get along with you Can't you see that my heart is breaking That you keep making I'll never get along with you I don't believe a word you tell me You never do the things that you say you do Sweetheart, I'll still love you always Try to understand I just can't be your loving man Be your loving man Done everything that I can do I'll never get along with you Brand new one, I'll never get along with you Now folks, time for a word from our generous sponsor Eastman Credit Union Radio Bristol's Farm and Fun Time. And remember, ECU is there for you. From using your phone to transfer money, making a deposit, signing loan documents from anywhere. For more information, visit ecu.org. Join Farm and Fun Time and say... Thank you, Eastman Credit Union. Hey, thanks. Thank you, Eastman Credit Union. All right, time to jump on into our heirloom recipe, the Farm and Fun Time Heirloom Recipe segment. Food is at the center of our culture and is so important here in the Appalachian region. Food represents much more than what we eat. It represents family, memories, history, place, home, and more. This month's presenter is Joe Deal, owner of the renowned downtown Bristol restaurant, The Burger Bar. The restaurant famed to have been the location of Hank Williams' last meal. Ooh. After earning a culinary arts degree teaching at Southeast Culinary Institute and years of cooking under his belt, Deal brought his knowledge and love of comfort food back to Bristol by purchasing the Burger Bar in 2012. Since then, Deal has made it a mission to offer fresh, creative, and affordable food to the Bristol community, helping to reestablish the Burger Bar as a food center here in the Tri-Cities. 
Tonight, Joe is going to talk about his famous heirloom chili recipe that he got from Bunnings Pharmacy, a gathering place for the Bristol community of decades past. Please give a big old farm and fun time welcome to Joe Deal. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, y'all are way too nice. It's hard to follow something like that. I'm just an amateur, so y'all give me a break on this one, but uh, I'm a chef, and I used to always tell everybody I have a face for the radio, but I didn't realize I was gonna have to see people for that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, it is an honor to be here tonight. Uh, I love Bristol, I love being downtown, I love my restaurant. Um, one of the first things I did when we bought the place, me and my wife, who's sitting right over here supporting me tonight, was I talked to a lot of the old timers, and I, and I say old timers, and I mean that out of respect. But um, uh, I asked a lot of them, I was like, what was it like when you came to the burger bar? So that's where I come up with the Bunnings aspect. Everyone talked about Bunnings Pharmacy uh, and the hot dogs and the chili. Has anyone here been to Bunnings? Yeah. Well, again, give me a break. I didn't get to eat there, so you all know more about it than I do. And uh, from what I understand, it was a fabulous place to eat. Um, I think a lot of it had to do with comfort foods. Uh, people were young, times were good. Uh, does anybody remember how much they paid for a hot dog at Bunnings? Two cents. Ten, fifteen cents, two for 25. Uh, one of the best stories I get, and I love to, uh, to talk to my local people, sometimes 80, 90 years old, tell me about coming to downtown Bristol, uh, bringing three Coke lids, riding the bus in town with a quarter, and uh, with a with a quarter and three Coke lids, they could come to, to Bristol, go to Bunnings, get a soda, a hot dog with chili, roll down to the Paramount and watch a movie, catch the bus back home, and still have change left. <laughs> now you got to get a loan application to go to the movies. But anyway, that's kind of where uh, the Bunnings, uh, you know, started in 1869. Um, needed, they needed a pharmacy downtown. Back then, State Street was Main Street wasn't even State Street yet. It was still Main Street at that time. Uh, Bunnings made it a long time, 1869 to 1983. Of course, the 80s came around, and when I think of the 80s, I think of Revco's, stores that we don't hear of anymore, but we still hear of Bunnings. Uh, Bunnings is still in operation. It's uh, Bunnings Northside on Euclid Avenue. Uh, Mr. Vanderveeter bought the name and did not want to let it die. Bunnings was the oldest pharmacy in Tennessee. As of today, it still is, except it's on the Virginia side. <laughs> I like to call that the good side because that's where my restaurant is. <laughs> we are there today. Um, but uh, the Bunnings Chili, it just had such a, a feeling when I, the people would come in and talk to me about it. Uh, how I got the recipe, me and my wife, and we had one young lady that worked with us named Ashley. If you all have ever eaten at the Burger Bar, you've met Ashley. She has red hair, very dynamic little young thing. Looks like she's 12. But she's not. She's about 24 now. She's been with us for six years. We've owned it for six years. It'll be seven in January. And uh, But the, this, I had a lady come in. We was open maybe three weeks. She come in and started talking to me about Bunnings Pharmacy Chili. And I said, wow, I'd love to have the recipe. So she said, well, here, let me give it to you. So she <laughs> jotted it down. Does anyone here have the recipe? It's out there. I know you have it. Um, so she jots it down. It's very unusual. I'm a chef. Not a public speaker, you know, not a, lot of, not a businessman, but a little bit, but I'm a chef. So I looked at the recipe and I thought, well, I can take this. I can do something with this. I want to bring this back. It's hard to do comfort foods because people remembered eating it when it was such a good time. So I might have people that taste it. And it might not taste quite like Bunnings, but we try. And we, uh, and we, we do follow the recipe. We actually uh, add a little more meat. They used to take five pounds of meat and make 20 pounds of chili out of it. <laughs> Times were hard. So uh, anyway, it's basically, I'll give you just a one over on it. Uh, a good chef, you don't need the amounts, you just need the ingredients, and then you go by taste. Uh, it was ground beef, and you boil it. You know, that's a little different than what I'm used to. You put your meat in, and you put water over the meat into the pot. You bring it to a boil, break it all up real nice. Then it had bacon fat, which is good in everything, um, ketchup, mustard, salt, pepper, chili powder, and just a pinch of sugar. And so you bring that to a rolling boil, and 
then you do a whitewash with flour and water. This is where I thought was very unusual because I've never done this and the chili is thick in it. Uh, so you thicken it almost like a gravy or a sauce. So uh, I, I started trying to guinea pig it. That was uh, the first day she gave me the recipe. So I roll in the next morning, eight o'clock. We used to do breakfast every day back then. And uh, I look at the door and I see this lady at the door. I was like, what's she doing? That's the lady that gave me the recipe. And I, I go to the door and I open the door and she said, I said, what are you doing, ma'am? And she said, I have to show you how to make it. <laughs> like, wow. So her with her two food city bags, she comes rolling in and I'm like, come on in. You know, I have the utmost respect for her. She used to work at Bunnings. Her last name was Peters. And I think she worked there in the 70s. And uh, so she come in and she showed me how to make it. And that's how we make our chili every day. Uh, we make it about every two days because it really needs to set. We make it, you put it in the refrigerator, let it set overnight, the next day it's much better. Uh, but the, those hot dogs from Bunnings, when you talk to people, they remember that more than they remember just about anything about downtown Bristol. Um, if you do get by the burger bar, I actually do have a Bunnings uh, menu with the 15 cent hot dogs on it. And it's an actual menu, someone's framed it for us. And uh, we have a picture of one of the old soda jerks that come from the Historic Society of actually making the sodas inside Bunnings Pharmacy. Uh, again, I am glad to be a part of Bristol and bringing Bunnings chili back to Bristol means a lot to me. And uh, the, the customers I have come in talking to me about the Bunnings chili is as special to me as any dollar that I'll ever make from selling a hot dog, I'll tell you that. Um, and I was, would really like to, uh, to, to have done this today. We actually talked a little bit about, about doing some samples of the chili because any of you guys that actually have had the Bunnings chili, I would love for you to come by and tell me what you think. You know, uh, just to give me a little uh, one-up, little synopsis on what you think the chili is like. But, uh, you know, the Bunnings history will always be a part of Bristol. Um, one of these days, that would be something I would love to open up, would be... Uh, just a hot dog, because when people come to the burger bar, they come for hamburgers, not for hot dogs. It's really hard for me to sell hot dogs in there, but we, uh, we do uh, try to complement our hamburgers with our hot dogs. But uh, do we have any questions about the Bunning Pharmacy? <laughs> you all probably know more about it than I do, actually. Uh, I've been in Bristol since the 80s, and again, the burger bar is, uh, is, my, is my home. But uh, I'm going to probably try to wrap this up and... Uh, turn this back over to the professionals and you've got some great music ahead. Thank you guys very much for your time. Joe Deal, everybody. A big thanks to Joe Deal for joining us this evening here on Farm and Fun Time. Uh, of course, you can visit Joe down at the Burger Bar or his website is originalburgerbar.com. Stop in, try some of the chili, try one of the great burgers. Yes, sir. All right. This is, uh, this is the time that makes me sweat here during Farm and Fun Time. We always write a jingle about the heirloom recipe story that was presented and wrote this one yesterday afternoon. I like, I, I really, I, I never got to go to Bunnings, but I really like the idea of a pharmacy that serves chili dogs. Uh, and I like the idea of a doctor having to write a prescription for chili dogs. So this song here is a song about that, and it's called The Chili Dog Crave. For a chili dog a day, oh hey, did I mention A chili dog and a soda pop We'll cure anything that you got Sign the dotted line, won't you doc Got a chili dog craving and it just won't stop Oh gee, doctor please I'm the neatest made, Lord I can't think straight Got a case of a chili dog crave Chili Dog Crave. 
And now a word from another generous sponsor, Window World Tri Cities. <laughs> and now another word from one of our generous sponsors, Window World Tri Cities. Sing the chili dog song again. Sorry. We got chili dogs on the mind. It's a hard thing. Face bows, double hung sliders. In the world, they window provider. Their selection it just keeps getting wider of face bows, double hung in sliders. Yes, for bays, bows, double hung and sliders. It's Window World, where all products are custom built and American made. For free in home consultation, windowworldtricities.com. Bays, bows, double hung sliders. Window World, they window provider. Their selection, it just keeps getting wider of bays, bows, double hung and sliders. Thank you, Window World. They do, not, they do not serve chili dogs at Window World. All right, folks, time for our first musical act of the evening. Very excited to have with us a band that plays a refreshing ba brand of country music, the kind of music that crosses genre lines, pays homage to the sounds of our past, combining the influences of traditional bluegrass, old-timey fiddle tunes, dance hall, honky-tonk, and more with top-of-the-line musical prowess. Please... Give a big farm and fun time welcome to Franklin County's own the Five Mile Road. That'd be Five Mile Mountain Road.
thank y'all just a whole lot. We sure do appreciate it. We're mighty proud to be here this evening with y'all, and uh, we're Five Mile Mountain Road from Franklin County, Virginia, the moonshine capital of the world. Yeah. Even got a little steel out there for you to look at if you want to see it. All right. Let me give us. Let me give you a rundown of who we got up here. To my right and your left, playing the guitar and the piano and the banjo and all kinds of different stuff. He writes songs. He plays music that I don't even understand. <laughs> Neither do I. That's all right. One of the one of the finest fellows I know on earth, Mr. Brennan Ernst. Yeah. The man here back here playing the bass with us and singing a good song. He wrote that song right there that we just did, the theme song for the band. Sure enough, did. He was born and raised up on top of the mountain there on Five Mile Mountain Road. Mr. J.C. Radford. Yeah! Thank you. The newest member of the band here. He's a he's young, but he don't he's he's too big to be but so young, but he but he is. He uh, he plays the guitar, the banjo and the mandolin and the bass and all kinds of stuff, writes songs, sings a good song. He's from the state of Illinois. Mr. Caleb Erickson. Thank you. Yeah. The man to my left and your right, he's a, he's a native Franklin County boy like myself. He was raised up near Endicott. He, uh, he writes songs and uh, plays a great banjo, plays a guitar and sings a good song as well. And he wrote the song we're getting ready to do right now here in just a minute. Mr. Seth Boyd. Hey, and folks, it's my pleasure to, to introduce the, the lead fellow in the group, the fellow that, that drives us all over the, you know, the East Coast of the USA and hopefully on up into Canada here in a little bit. Uh, he picks out the tunes. He keeps us all in line best he can. He was born and raised in Franklin County, Virginia, at the foot of Hayes Mountain, and he's been playing the fiddle since, uh, how old were you, Billy? That was about the time he was building Natural Bridge. Ba building Natural Bridge, okay. There's a picture of him sitting on the legendary Clark Kessinger's lap when he was two years old. He, his family was affiliated with the Kessinger family. But please make make welcome fiddling Billy C. Hurt Jr. We're going to play this next song. It's instrumental that's out on our new album. This is one of I wrote for my wife. You can usually see her along the side of the stage uh, dancing. And uh, this one's called Shaky. Thank you a whole lot there. Oh, that's some mighty good pull hammer in there, Seth. That's some mighty good song right, right there, my friend. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, this next song is a, the first time I ever heard it. I was listening to a, listening to some music before we was getting ready to do a show. And it was, actually it was Bobby Hicks playing the fiddle on it. And I just love this song from the first time I ever heard it. 
and uh, Bob Wills recorded it. And uh, but the original recording that before that, I'm sure it goes back to other times. But the co recording that we got the version we do from is from Billy Jack Wheels, was Bob's brother there, and it's a, a nice little tune there. It's a, <laughs> one of my favorites, Lily Dale. Are you ready, sir? Y'all, sir. circles and we're going to do it in an old timey way kind of like here. It's about a guy that couldn't get along with people every once in a while. That's the best I can tell about it. You ready sir? Yes, sir. Let's do a little bit of that Wild Bill Jones. Yes. 
is 21 years too old to be controlled. So I pulled my pistol from off of my side and I destroyed that poor boy's soul. Sent me down to prison for 20 long years. This poor boy would like to be free. But while Bill Jones and that long neck bottle have been the ruin of me, so it passed around that old long neck bottle that we'll all get on the street. For today, saw the last of that wild Bill Jones, and tomorrow see the last. Good stuff you did there, Mr. Sin, Mr. Brennan. All right, uh, we're gonna let Brennan do your little little drum solo kickoff thing here on this song. Yeah, let me get my drum kit set up. And here. get that thing set up real quick because we forgot to set it up earlier. Let me have them powders there, please. Sir. Uh, I was gonna tell you to grab it, but maybe not. No, nah, I'll just do not do that today. Anyway, um, this is an old marching band tune, and uh, around the house where I'm from, down there in Franklin County, and, and thereabouts. A lot of people always play this at the square dance for a square dance number. And it's kind of a favorite around there. And uh, we're going to let you have a little bit of the under the double eagle. change up things here a little bit on the old show here. Well, the good news is I don't have to play any more guitar on this set, so... That's good news, I guess. 
We don't need you playing the five string <laughs> guitar. All right, we're going to bring Brennan around here for you all to, to render you a little number on the, on the keyboard here. And uh, who, where this would come from there, Brennan? Oh, let's see. What am I doing? Frog legs. Frog legs, yeah. <laughs> but this is a good old tune here called Frog Legs, and he'll be Frog laying it. Frog Legs Rag. Frog Legs Rag. I guess I better say it into the microphone. This tune was written in uh, 1907 by, or 1906 by James Scott, who is a native of, uh, funnily enough, near Joplin, Missouri. Um, the, he wrote this tune it's called Frog Legs Rag. I'm going to play it for you. <laughs> yeah. Let her go, boy. <laughs> couple tunes here and be done with it. Uh, we we'll do some one of uh, well actually there's two Charlie Poole numbers we're gonna do here for you. And uh, well Charlie Poole had a great piano player with him in his band. He didn't play with the piano with the, with the band that often but uh, probably on live shows he probably did. But uh, we're gonna start out with an old tune here called Lynchburg Town. And it used to be that the bands had pianos with them a lot at the old dance halls and stuff and you don't see it that much and we're going to do the best we can to resurrect a little bit of that for you here this evening. Hope you like it. Lynchburg Town.
We sure have had a good time picking and singing for y'all folks here today and hope you enjoyed some of the stuff we did. And uh, we sure are proud to be here. And uh, we got one more tune for you here. Then we're going to get out of y'all's way and let somebody else come up here and play. <laughs> this is a good old number here about railroad trains and hoboing and such as the like of that. A little bit of the Milwaukee Blues. trying to get home. I got the new walking blue. Hobos are hanging around. Well, old Bill Jones said before he died, won't you fix the road so the boats can ride? When they ride, they'll ride the rods and they'll put all the trust in the hands of in the hands of God. It's the Santa Fe, it's the Santa Fe, it's the Santa Fe, it's the Southern Pacific, it's the Santa Fe. Thank y'all, just a whole lot. Uh, hope we have a five mile mountain. Thank y'all so much. Five mile mountain road, everybody. For more information, check them out on Facebook. They've got a new record out on Patunxet Records that you should definitely check out. And do Bren Brennan does as well. He's got a couple records out there over on Patuxent. Uh, good, good stuff. Thank you, fellas. We appreciate you. Yes, sir. Now, friends, it's time for the Radio Bristol Farm Report, made possible by HVAC and Ed Hill, full-service specialty contractor, offering a full complement of building solutions for plumbing, heating, ventilation, building automation, geothermal, solar, wind, and more. For more information, visit HVACBristol.com. And you might hear turkey in the straw there. That's for a reason. 
Uh, the Farm Report profiles regional, regional farmers strengthening our community through sustainable, eco-friendly practices, helping to positively impact our region's food access and health. Every month we visit a regional farm and do a profile piece on that farm. This month we stayed very close to home, visiting Eric and Megan of Cage Ridge Farms in Bluntville, Tennessee. Uh, their emphasis at, Cage, at Cave Ridge is pasture-raised meats. Right now they sell grass-fed beef and lamb, pasture-raised pork and chicken, and something particularly of the season, Thanksgiving turkeys. So we're going to talk some turkey and check out this farm report right about now. I'm Eric Napora. And I'm Megan Kidwallader. And uh, it's Cave Ridge Farm. We're uh, right outside of Blountville, Tennessee. So we have been here for 10 years now, and we built a, our house on this property. So we started, I would say, more for ourselves. Um, we wanted to eat good food, and we had some land, and we started with raising um, meat chickens. Uh, just a small number to begin with and then through word of mouth and kind of friends of friends we started to offer some for sale as well and then we expanded to Thanksgiving turkeys and then this year we've raised pastured pork and grass-fed beef and uh, for the past few years we've also had uh, grass-fed lamb as well. So mainly the mission is kind of like it's natural and sustainable as we can do it so you know what doesn't need grain doesn't and then Anything that does, we feed a non-GMO local feed uh, and try and still provide pasture in a clean place for them to live. And to, well, we were starting up like nine or ten years ago, it felt like something that not a lot of people were doing, but we've met a lot of people that were interested in finding a better place to um, get meat. And we drove to Knoxville to get a pastured turkey, I think, in the early years. Yeah. <laughs> Currently we're raising broad-breasted white turkeys, which are the same breed that you would find in a grocery store. But we, uh, we, we raise them mainly because that's what people are familiar with for Thanksgiving. They're the prototypical, picturesque Thanksgiving turkey. Um, but we raise them with a non-GMO feed that's local. So we used to raise a couple different varieties of heritage turkeys, which heritage turkeys are what you would have found 100 years ago. We, had, uh, we raised uh, Blue Slate and Bourbon Red were the names. Um, but the problem with it is uh, they took twice as long to grow to a smaller size. It's very different to cook them. Like yeah. when we would send our customers, we were kind of saying that a lot of people really wanted to want heritage turkeys, but when they would bring them home, they weren't quite happy with how the meat turned out. And then on top of that, they're really good at escaping. They're very, <laughs> they're very close to wild turkeys. Like they, they fly a lot easier. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, if you would like a Thanksgiving turkey, um, please email me or us at ericnapora at hotmail.com or give us a call at 423-367-9660. And to learn more about food and farming, visit Appalachian Sustainable Development's website at asdevelop.org. Big thanks to Eric and Megan at Cave Ridge Farm for having us. Uh, and again, if you're interested in ordering a pasture-fed, non-GMO Thanksgiving turkey, you can reach out to them at Eric Napora. That's E-R-E-K Napora at hotmail.com. And we've got Megan and family right down here. Right. Everybody give them a big round of applause. We want to thank them for having us uh, for Farm and Fun Time. It was a wonderful visit, so thank you. All right, we're going to jump into a tune. We're going to feature Helena Hunt on this next tune here. This is a, a song. What, what do we got here? This is our space age uh, sci-fi old time song called I Once Loved a Sailor. <laughs> I love a sailor, a sailor loves me. He sails every night to my 
the sailor who sails all the sea all over the wild piney foam he owns an airship and sails upon high he's just like a bird on the wing and when the shadows of evening draw nigh he'll sail to my trip in my airship. Come take a sail around the star. Come take a trip in through Venus. Come have a sail around to Mars. No one to see while we're kissing. No one to tell while we spoon. Come take a trip in trip in my airship. And now a word from Friends of Southwest Virginia, generous sponsor to Farm and Fun Time. No matter time or season, there will always be a reason to see a different side of Virginia. We think that it's your duty to explore this place of beauty. Come and see a different side of Virginia. This message is brought to you by Friends of Southwest Virginia, an organization committed to preserving, promoting, and presenting the cultural and natural assets of the 19 counties in our region. Visit myswva.org to discover a different side of Virginia. If you needed one more reason to visit this here region, farm and fun time broadcast from Southwest Virginia. Thank you, friends of Southwest Virginia. All right, folks, are you ready for our next musical guest? It's a doozy. Uh, Blue Highway, a name synonymous with the best that bluegrass music has to offer, is here with us. Their latest release, Original Traditional, highlights not only the band's virtuosic and tasteful picking and singing, but also their tremendous talents as some of the best songwriters in the business. 28 IBMA Awards, six Spigma Awards, three Grammy nominations, and many more accolades to come, no doubt about it. We're so happy to have with us here on Farm and Fun Time, Blue Highway, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, folks. No, nope. turn the guitar on. That'd be great. There you go. 
I'd rather be a fox with the hunters on his trail. Rather be an old dog left astray. Rather have no one to come home to than to live in love hurting day after day. It's great to see everybody here tonight. Man, what a beautiful crowd here for farming fun time right here in Bristol, Virginia, the birthplace of country music. Yes, sir. This is the first time we've ever played while we were out in the audience. This is pretty cool. <laughs> we love it like I that. I like it, you know. Do we have any Merle Haggard fans here by any chance? Well, you've got a bunch of them on this stage. We're going to do a Merle Haggard song for you. This is one that... He knew just a little bit about, about a prison down in Central Texas. This one called Huntsville. One, two, three. I know right there, Judge in Dallas, didn't pay my story no mind. They're taking me down to Huntsville. But I'm looking for a chance to run My hands don't fit no chopping pole And cotton never was my bag They better keep both eyes on me They're gonna lose their time
first chance I get So they're never gonna cut me loose And I really don't care if they shoot me down I'll never be free again I've got two long life turns to do And they're both running in the me down to Huntsville but I'm not gonna stay Thank y'all, thank y'all. We'll do your song here now. It's off of the latest record that we have out. It's about farming and there's a lot of farms around here. I heard a song a few years back written by a good, a good friend of mine and an idol of mine is uh, Jim Rushing, and it was about in the hardware store hangs this garden hoe that costs fourteen ninety five, and if we bought one of those and we traded our kids' uh, iPad with it and traded them out and let them use that instead of the iPad a while, it'd solve a lot of the world's problems. <laughs> and so he wrote a song about it. So I wanted to write a song about that too, and it's called A Long Road to Hoe. Out of bed at daylight, breakfast on the stove, grab our dinner bucket, getting ready to go. We'll head out to do the field, scratching in the ground, better grab a jug of water, the sun is a beating down. It's a long road to home, long road to home, better grab your work and riches, it's a long road to home. Fire on the mountain, burning timber down. Let's call on help from the Lord to put the hot flames out. It's a long road to home, long road to home. Better grab your work and bridges. It's a long road to home. Thank you so much for coming out. We really appreciate it. We, uh, we're Blue Highway. We've been together. Next year will be 25 years for this time. 
And we did start in Kingsport, Tennessee. Uh, we're we're kind of local guys. Uh, we don't play here very much, but it's great to be back here. The guy that wrote that song and sang it for you, all the way from uh, Scott County, Virginia. <laughs> but he lives in Walhalla, South Carolina now, so it took him a little while to get out here. He's one of the finest singers and songwriters in all of bluegrass music. Mr. Sean Lane, make him up. We kind of thought that for our 25th anniversary, our anniversary, we would rename the band, and uh, we thought about Antiques Roadshow. Uh, <laughs> but we kind of thought maybe uh, the Spice Boys would be good. Uh, you know, we I kind of thought that Wayne could be Old Spice uh, for obvious reasons. Yes. And, and Justin plays all the instruments, uh, not just the dobro, so we thought he might be all spice. Uh, and what were you going to do? Well, I, I, I changed my name. I was going to be Pumpkin Spice, but I'm, I'm changing it to Tony Spice. Tony Spice. <laughs> I like Pretty that. Pretty close, yeah, you know. Yeah. You know. Okay. Tony Sriracha. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Over here on the banjo, folks, all the way from Avery County, North Carolina, now living in Johnson City, Tennessee. It's Mr. Jason Burleson. Give him a big hand. <laughs> We'll bring him around and uh, do a Ralph Stanley song. Got any Ralph Stanley fans here? Okay. Oh, where are you over there? I see you somewhere. Won't you spur me over to Britney Spears? Yeah. You used to play up here all the time, Ralph. I know we did, me and Carter. This yeah. is where you started. This is where I started, yeah. I remember it well. Clinch Mountain Backstab! Folks, uh, down there on the Dobro, and I wanted to make sure I introduced him. He's uh, one of the finest uh, musicians you're ever going to hear. Um, been with uh, 
Blue Highway for about two months now. And, uh, <laughs> he, uh, he's a wonderful player. He's, uh, and I guess he'd been doing it long enough because uh, he won Dobro Player of the Year at the Bluegrass Awards uh, <laughs> last night. Yeah. He's one of a kind and a great singer, plays all of these instruments up here way better than any of us. And uh, oh, yeah. we, we pretty much hate him. Uh, <laughs> Don't tell him that. We want him to stay around a little while longer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. He's one of the best folks. He's uh, from Madisonville, Tennessee, now living in uh, near Nashville, Lebanon. That's Mr. Justin Moses down there on the day. Thank you. And on the bass, I want to make sure that we mention this guy. He's a founding member of the band, and uh, he's been through a lot, folks. Two heart attacks over the last 25 years. Uh, had colon cancer. He's a survivor, and singing better, I think, than he ever has in his whole life. It's Mr. Wayne Taylor. Make him well. And this, this dude right here doesn't fool with a cold or anything like that. He gets heart attacks and strokes. And he don't fool with the small stuff. Yeah, about, about two and a half years ago, I had quadruple bypass open heart surgery, and I would not wish that on anybody, but I thank God every day that I live in a day and age when the knowledge is there to do that and to, to get you back. All I ever wanted to do was get back to doing what I love, and boy, I appreciate every minute of it and every prayer that anybody ever said for me, so thank you all so much. Chick, chick. Wayne had a long way to come uh, for this. He lives in Bristol, Virginia. So, uh, but He's lived there a long time, though. Yeah. He was a colonel in the Civil War. <laughs> this is part of my uniform. <laughs> what well, uh, used to be right here, where this building is? This, this was uh, Lee's headquarters, I believe, <laughs> back in the day. That's why they call it the Lee, Hit Lee Highway over Lee there. Highway. Yeah. there Folks right here on the guitar all the way from Jonesboro, Tennessee. Originally from Kingsport. And one of the best, Tim Stafford. Thank y'all. It's great to be here. I was, I was on the board of directors of the, the Birthplace of Country Music Alliance way back in the 90s uh, when we first had the dream of having a museum in Bristol for everything. And uh, we, we were there talking about it, but we were never able to get past the building stage. And you guys, have, the people who did this have just taken it so far, and it's an amazing thing. It really is. I want to commend everybody who is involved in, uh, in Farm and Fun Time also, because this is it's great to bring this back. What a great idea. Yep. It's awesome, don't you think? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, how many of you like acapella gospel singing? Well, we're not going to do one. I was just checking. <laughs> it's good to know. Uh, this is one that's a title cut of our gospel record, and uh, we already had one lady come up and said she really, you know, wanted to hear this, um, and we appreciate it. It's a sacred harp song. It's our version of one called Wondrous Love. Lord of bliss 
to bear the dreadful curse for my soul, for my soul. To bear the dreadful curse for my soul. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul. What wondrous love is this that calls the Lord of bliss to bear the dreadful curse for my soul, for my soul. To, to bear the dreadful curse for my soul. When I was sinking down, sinking down, sinking down. When I was sinking down, sinking down. When I was sinking down beneath God's righteous frown, Christ laid aside his crown for my soul, for my soul. Christ laid aside his crown for my soul. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing on, I'll sing on. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing on. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing and joyful be. And through eternity, I'll sing on, I'll sing on. And through eternity, I'll sing on. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this that calls the Lord of kinds of bluegrass music. There's such uh, great artists in bluegrass music and uh, we uh, love to write our own songs. And this guy, you know, I don't know what it is about bluegrass songs. A lot of people get killed in them. I don't really know why that is. <laughs> it's just different from country music. You know, they always say if you play a country music backwards, you, you get your wife back and you get your car back, you know. <laughs> That's the joke, you know, but... You play a bluegrass record backwards, your wife comes back to life. And, uh, she crawls out of a river in Knoxville. And, and she buffs the scratches out of your Volkswagen. Happens in every song. Um, but this is a song that Sean Lane wrote with Barry Bales. And uh, it's one that... Uh, was the title cut of a record we did a few years ago, and uh, I think 13 people died in the first verse. Uh, this song, it's uh, you can't live them all. No, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Thank goodness. Uh, this one called the game. Well, I laid cards down, pulled all my money in, left and hollered, boys, looks like a one hand again. Another gambler started raging and he cursed me for a cheat. My coat revolver found its mark as we both jumped to our feet. Shut him down, shut him down. That is the end of the game. Play. They caught me just 
horse that my horse was all broke down. I fell to St. Clos and I wasn't going back to town. Shut him down, shut him down. That is the end of the game. Said I'll have to turn you in. My coat revolver started speaking and it found its mark again. Shut him down, shut him down. That is him, but the game. Fresh out of the Wayne Taylor bobbleheads. 
but we've got a brand new order of the Tim Stafford Beanie Babies. They're a big seller. <laughs> you know what? <coughs> as much as people seem to like that, we might ought to think about getting those for our 25th anniversary celebration. <laughs> well, maybe speak for yourself. <laughs> We do have a couple special items out there, though, if anybody's interested. We got uh, any Tony Rice fans here? We got a few Tony Rice fans. Tony's, uh, of course, the greatest guitar player of his generation in bluegrass music and uh, uh, was fortunate enough to do his authorized biography a few years ago. Wrote a book. It's out there on the table. It's called Still Inside the Tony Rice Story. And Wayne Taylor, no, I'm sorry, Sean Lane, well, you got your solo record, don't you, Wayne? Did you bring me this? <laughs> Well, I'll take give you his address. You can come over to his house and get one if you want to. So. Just swing by. It's on the way home. Uh, but but Sean Lane over there actually went into business uh, last year with a professor from Clemson University. And uh, well, thank you. Go Tigers! But this is uh, they actually uh, developed a uh, super pick. It's like a flat pick. That won't wear out. Yeah, it's made out of this stuff used in aircraft uh, jet engine bearings. So it, it turns every time that engine turns and keeps these planes. And you know, if if you can't if they can't wear it out, you probably won't wear it out on a guitar. Uh, they will wear, but you got to pick a lot to do it. They've made me want to play a lot more. So come check them out. And after that, you better buy one, whoever you were up there. <laughs> Clemson fan buying a pick. It's all it's a. Uh, thank you so much, folks. We're really happy that we could be here, and uh, thanks to the folks at Farm and Fun Time and the museum for having us. And uh, for Justin and Sean and Wayne, Jason, I'm Tim. We're Blue Highway. We'll see you guys down the road. BlueHighwayBand.com. What a wonderful, wonderful band. So happy to have them here with us on Farm and Fun Time. All right, folks, did you have a good time this evening? 
Wonderful, wonderful. We hope all the people listening did as well. A uh, huge thanks to everybody for coming out here this evening to Radio Bristol's Farm and Fun Time. A big thanks to Blue Highway, Five Mile Mountain Road, Joe Deal, and Burger Bar, Cave Ridge Farm, ASDHVAC, and Ed Hill, ARCD, Window World, Tri-Cities, Friends of Southwest Virginia, Josh Littleton up there, our engineer. Give him a big hand. <clears throat> our whole Radio Bristol team, we've got Tony back there on a the camera. We've got Brett right here on a camera. Nathan running around. Give them a big hand. Uh, next month, we've got another sold-out Farm and Fun Time, our special Farm and Fun Time Christmas Spectacular, uh, featuring Sally and George, Carolina Blue and the Church Sisters. It's going to be a great show. Don't forget to also check out our extension program, the Farm and Fun Time Noon Show, with the Poe Ramblin' Boys, made possible by Permatile Concrete Products. We so appreciate you, live audience. Thanks for coming every month, and we hope that you enjoy it farm and fun time. We're going to leave you here as we always do with the Tennessee song. We started out with the Virginia tune. We got to be diplomatic. Here you go. Take me back to Tennessee. Farm and Fun Time, made possible by Eastman Credit Union. Wherever life takes you, ECU is by your side. To hear more from Radio Bristol, download our app or visit us at listenradiobristol.org. I'm your host, Chris Trulson, along with Bill and the Bells, thanking you for listening to Radio Bristol's Farm and Fun Time. Thank you so much, everybody. You guys did a wonderful job. I appreciate you. We'll see you next month. Go and support all the great artists out here at the tables. Go and